Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Thank y'all for coming out. I want to say a special thank you to everybody. Thank you. I don't know your organization, but I plan on being there for your walk. I'm going to get your card. So everybody y'all know, everybody y'all know me in Houston, Northside mostly, I'm a big supporter of everybody, not just women. <laughs> I like supporting us going to the next level. So today, um, I have to talk about Dr. Daphne because I love her more than anything. I don't know if y'all know, I met her on Periscope, y'all. <laughs> when Periscope first came out a couple of years ago, and she would get on there with that accent, and I was like, Lord, what is this lady talking about? <laughs> I couldn't understand nothing she was saying at first, but my spirit was drawn to her. So I would come on her scopes and come on her scope. One day I went back on and I was like, Dr. Dan, whoa, have you been Houston? Miss Ramona, where you been? And I was like, um, I got bored with Periscope. That has nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry. And so she was talking about GrowCon Houston. I mean, GrowCon and how she was going here and there. And I was like, okay. I said, when you come to Houston, I'll help you. And so she's like, which most people, what do you do? Of course, me, I always say, what do you need? I don't want to tell you what I do. <laughs> what do you need? And so I start helping her with vendors or whatever. And then she starts seeing me doing this. And then she say, oh, no, you're valuable than that. I'm going to help you. And so she's been helping me to grow myself, to transition from being a stay-at-home mom with five kids to being an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm always volunteering. <laughs> I volunteer for everything, but she says it's time for you to get paid. <laughs> so with the honors, I want to say um, I love her very much. And I know she's valuable to not just me, but she's valuable to the world. Um, she has more accolades than I can tell you all. So I'll let her tell you about it. Please welcome Dr. Daphne Clark Hudson. Thank you, Ms. Ramona Parker. <laughs> yes, it's, it's an honor for me to be here. And if it's okay with you, I am going to be open, frank, unfiltered, unapologetic, and bold. And by doing so, I am going to start off with my story and then I'll transition into why we are all gathered here this afternoon. I was born and raised on the sunny island of Jamaica, West Indies. I, my adversities in life started off when I was 13 and a half because that's when I lost my mother. And my mother had grand visions for me because even now I'm standing here at the age of 69 close to 70 I still hear my mother's voice in my spirit because my mother was an asthmatic and my father was a farmer my mother always says to me she always says to me, sweetie, one of these days you're going to be a nurse. A good nurse, she would say. You would be wearing a uniform and a cap and you are going to get paid. She would say to me, sweetie, you're going to be a good nurse one of these days. Wearing a cap and a uniform and getting paid. So she actually programmed me to go into nursing. And back then, the bank account were some animals that was being raised. Pigs, goats, cows. And when you're ready for the money, you would sell those animals to get the money. So the plan was that those animals would be sold and send me to England to study nursing. Well, the dream of going to England died because my mother died, as I said, age 13 and a half. However, the dream of me becoming a nurse never died because every day I heard my mother saying, sweetie, you could be a good nurse. So 
I was trained as a nurse at the St. James Local Hospital in Montego Bay, Jamaica, West Indies. And I'm not going to bore you with all 69 and a half years of my life. I'll tell you that from there, catapult me. I went to public health nursing. I went into the working at the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. And of course, I did not attend high school. Why? Because I missed some days. Remember I mentioned when mama was sick? I missed school. So back then, you had to pass the common entrance exam in order to go to high school. I wasn't privileged to pass the whole exam. I only passed a half. So I remained at the Carmel Primary School. And that was where I got my entire elementary education by passing the first, second, and third Jamaica local exam. I'm proud today as I stand here, not because of my achievement, but back in 2012 when I went back to Jamaica and visited my school to show my son where I got my education, a girl who I knew as a three-year-old was now the principal. And when I walked up, you know, children in the country, they see strange face, everybody looking through the window. And she walked out and she looked up and she said, there is a God. And I said, Gwen, is that you? She said, yes, Miss Sweetie, because that's what they call me in Jamaica, right? She said, every day I pray to the Lord that I would see you again before I die because I knew how kind you were to me as a three-year-old child. Every time I talk about it, it brings tears to my eyes. So don't forget about the seed that you plant in whatever way because whether you are there to water it or nurture it, plant it in good soil, and it will come to harvest. So I said, how is the school doing? And she said to me, some things are good, some things are bad. I said, what? What do you mean? She said, now the children go to school automatically. They go to high school. They don't need to pass the common entrance exam. But she said, the children are coming to school without breakfast. And the minute she voiced those words, I heard in my spirit, that's why I send you here today. And I looked at her and I said, Gwen, I don't know how I am going to do it. I'm making a commitment today that every child will get a hot breakfast five days a week. I came back to the U.S. I founded the Empowering People Foundation, Inc., to start to raise money to prepare the breakfast. And I went back down there 2013, and I worked the kitchen for two weeks with some parents to make sure the kids get breakfast. So I want to ask you guys to keep it in your priors as we continue to do that. Transition... You notice Miss Ramona called me Dr. Daphne because I did not become a victim to not going to high school. My mother told me I was going to be a good nurse, but I love to talk. <laughs> Lord knows when I was doing a, a nursing and I go over to serve their medication, the other co co-workers said to me, Clark Hudson, what do you find to talk about with everybody? I said, I don't know, but I have to talk. My patients were not just patients to pop the pill. I want to find out who visited them when I was off and what did the doctor say, and it's a long conversation. At the end of the conversation, oh, by the way, Mrs. Jones, sit up and take your medication. So, little did I know that my talking so much back then had something to do with what I'm doing now. So when you hear people talk about 
Oh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You're lying. You just don't want to do what you are called to do because you're watching other people. Because what we are called to do is that thing that eggs us the wrong way every day. Like my sister speaks about cancer with such passion. You know she was born to do that. And come hell or high water, she's going to do that. Nothing is going to stop her, whether she has the funding or not. So, I came here, learned about something called inspirational speaking. No, but then when I started, it was motivational speaking because I wasn't investing in myself enough to know that motivation is an inside job, but I can inspire you to be motivated. So, then I said, ooh, I'm liking this thing. I was working at United Way and an Indian scientist said to me, he said, cheerleader, you should be a motivational speaker. And I laughed so hard, I said to him, nobody paying money for that. He said, yeah. And he began to name a few people who had their books and their tapes. But guess what? I was not calling them motivational speaker. So I stepped out and I said, yes, I am going to do that. My professor at University of Bridgeport, she always says to me after class, woman of wisdom, wait a little, don't leave yet. And we would always sit and chat. And she found out about all the things that I have um, studied. And she said to me, you know you can do a portfolio of all the things you have studied and get extra credit. I said, Dr. How what? She said, yes. She said, I can show you how to start the process. Man, I pull every certificate and diploma and degrees that I had from I was in Jamaica. She showed me how to work on them and get some extra credit. And I'm sharing all of that to tell you that there are many of you, and you probably know somebody who is saying, I'm too old to go to school. When I got my PhD, I was 65 years old. So if I can do it, so can you. Don't let anybody dictate to you to tell you what you can and cannot do. Where there is a will, there is a way. Grow con. I promise you I'm going to be unfiltered and I'm going to be bold. I'm very disobedient. For years, I hid from what God wanted me to do. Why? I didn't want the church to label me new age. I didn't want them to say that I backslide. I didn't want them to know how intuitive I was. I hid it. And one lady I used to tell stuff, she and I used to be driving to church, and on our way back home, she said to me, I didn't know you talking to Pastor Frank in the week. And I said, no, I don't talk to Pastor Frank. She said, but what you was telling me in the car this morning is the same thing Pastor Frank preached about today. I said, I know. She said, but if you didn't talk to him, how you know? So I had to confess and to let her know. You know, I'm intuitive. I, I see stuff. I, I feel stuff. I know stuff. She said, what? All these years, you never said anything to me. So, September of 2016, I got up, did my devotion, sitting on the edge of my bed. I had no energy to get up. None whatsoever. I couldn't shake it. I didn't know what was happening. And I sat there. You know, you sit with your um, elbows on your knee and pondering. Then I heard in my spirit, get that monkey off your back. And the minute I heard that in my spirit, a surge of energy went through me. I got up, I grabbed my iPad, periscope, here I come. And I started to broadcast, I type in the topic, get that monkey off your back. 
and I heard the spirit say, go outside. I went outside and I was broadcasting. I look, I saw one person on the screen and I felt my body going like that, just moving. And the tears was running down my eyes, just moving. Tears was running down my eyes. And after the broadcast, I opened my eyes. I was like from here down to the door. My eyes closed. I didn't know how I got over there. I opened my eyes and I read the screen. And this man said, my name is Sean. I am watching you from Orlando, Florida. Thank you. Thank you for this broadcast. I came on Periscope this morning looking for something to listen to. And I stopped by you, don't know why. The monkey on my back has been on my back for five and a half years. I've been struggling with methadone for five and a half years. I don't know how to shake it. After listening to you today, I am encouraged to go out and get help. I dropped my iPod on the grass. I held my hand up. I said, God, I will not disobey you anymore. I am going to be authentically who you call me to be. And that's where GroCon grew from. Because God's been showing me things to do for women entrepreneurs and I've been pushing it aside. Wanting to be like everybody else. And God said, no, you are special. You are unique. You need to do what I call you to do. I was still fighting it. Still wanted to do Daphne without realizing. It's not about me. And God put me in the hospital. I had a big surgery. I had small intestines obstruction. And like 3.30 in the morning, it's like I felt like somebody shaking me. I look around, I thought the nurse was waking me. Nobody. Just the other patient there and myself. Now you do what I say when I say. If I don't say move, you stay still. I will tell you when to move. It has been challenging for me to do that and to continue to be obedient. At church, I was on the choir. I was greeters. I was teaching small groups. I was in drama, I was doing everything, burning the candles at both ends and in the middle. And again, remember I told you how scared I was about being judged by the church. You remember I said that? And the same thing happened after my surgery. I wasn't doing as much as I used to do. I wasn't going as often because God said, you do me, I'll tell you when. And I did not want to go back to the hospital. So I say, I better do what he's telling me. And people have been calling me, oh, you backslide, you became new age and everything. And I have learned to be authentic because God told me I'm special. And I said, you know, God has put this grow hunting in my heart. I say, you know, let me just activate it. Let me just do what he calls me to do. And... We wanted to start in Maryland until Ramona came on board and started giving Maryland for a run for their money. And then she said, no, it's going to happen in Houston first. And I'm going to make sure it happened in Houston first. And that's why I want to thank you guys for allowing us to launch GroCon here in Houston. This is only the beginning. I am open. I'm obedient and I'm receptive. Wherever he calls me to go, I am going. Now we are in conversation with um, Georgia. No, yeah, Georgia and um, Florida and California and Detroit. We'll see what God leads. I ask that you keep it in prayers. Don't be discouraged by what you see here today, but just send all of your positive energy. And I ask you this question, what are you pregnant with? What are you pregnant with? Every man and woman in this room tonight, this afternoon, you're pregnant. You are pregnant. 
Can you repeat after me? I am pregnant. I am pregnant. When are you planning on delivering? So I just want again to give gratitude. I want to acknowledge Miss Lynette for stepping up and saying, I don't know that crazy woman from no place, but Ramona said she know her and she love her. And she stepped out and said, you know, no sister left behind wants to partner with you in Houston. Thank you for that honor and for that privilege. All right? And we'll see what God has in store for Houston. And we are hoping that each and every one of you will go out there and spread the word because all of us knows people in other area. So that's a little bit and I'm hoping that you're not just going to see me today. You will become part of my communities. And we'll get to become families and see how we can add value to each other. So... If you have any questions for me, I would be more than willing to answer. Uh, you have to excuse me because I represent women <clears throat> who are not as, um, as privileged as we are here. So I ask questions so that it can help me know how to approach them. I am talking about African women back in Africa. And I can see you being so use, so inspirational and so useful if you were to go and give this kind of talk. And I have been talking to um, Lynette. There is so much that we can do to uplift our people wherever they are. And I'm sure even it's the same as in Jamaica because yes, we are still under underdeveloped countries yes, yes. and like for instance when I was saying how do you do you when I said me I wasn't really talking about me, me. yes I was talking to me talking about me as a woman because mm -hmm. what I get from you I go I take it back and then I can inspire the women up there mm -hmm. so I'm trying to see if you can start thinking out of the box of being in the US and maybe think about well, maybe I can cross the ocean and go. Girl, I've been out of the box and out of the closet for years. <laughs> I have passport, have passport, will follow, uh, will travel. Okay. Have somebody who sees the value of what you have will follow. Yes. So, it's up to you now. Are we going to Africa or what? Yes. It's up to you. Girl, I have passport. Okay. <laughs> All right, you know, on a serious note, because there was a there was a prophet on one of my periscope from Ghana, and he typed in the chat. He's a woman of God. My church want to host you in Ghana, so I'm ready to go. Okay. I am ready to go because women are suffering. We need to be out of oppression. And it's not only in Africa. There are women in this very country who is being oppressed. Yes. So let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. All right? So I guess I have to pass the mic along. Pass the mic along. Yeah, I had actually, let me read something that I had written. What is empowering? Is it the process of giving moral, physical power to someone else? Is it enabling or permitting more opportunity for independent action? Is it the process of becoming stronger, more confident, especially in controlling one's life, claiming one's rights so that she can make more decisions, solve problems, provide service, Improve performance. Empowerment fosters power in people for use in their own lives, mm -hmm. their community, their society, by acting on issues they define as important. Now I put my side note, I said, I believe you are empowered 
when you allow yourself to come to terms with life, mm -hmm. which you did, through unique circumstances beyond your control. Mm -hmm. And then you come to zero, after you come to zero, you become creative, you become pregnant, and you give birth. Give her a hand. Wow. And that's, on that note, I'll close that. Th what's your name again, my sister? Philippa. Philippa. Thank you, Philippa. So, I want to say thank you to those of you who have tuned in to be with us virtually tonight. We just hope that next time you are going to be right here with us. And again, thanks to Mr. Colin, uh, Cat uh, TV. Cat TV, thank you, sir. And everyone who has come out again, Miss Ramona girl, I can't say enough about you and all of the other organization that has been awarded here today. And I will see you, we will see you in, you, in um, Atlanta on September 16th. Love you. This is Dr. Daphne saying goodbye from GroCon. Houston, bye everybody. Tell me what you're thinking Tell me about your feelings